can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Hey, thanks for tuning in. As always, my trusty podcast partner, Matt, is manning the camera. Yes, I am. And I'm Ben, and that makes this stuff they don't want you to know. In an earlier episode, we looked at the concept of water conflicts, water wars, the idea that one nation state would wage war on another state over water, one of the most precious resources on the planet. Now, this might sound like some Mad Max dystopian science fiction, but there's some troubling facts behind it. The United Nations right now estimates that there are more than 300 potential water conflicts around the globe. And we touched on this in our episode. But where are those conflicts? Let's take a closer look. Well, let's start on the African continent. We see that North Africa has an ongoing water conflict between Egypt, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and Rwanda because they're all drawing water from the Nile Basin. And of course, this isn't the only conflict on the African continent. Tributaries of the Zambezi River have become a source of tension for Zimbabwe, Zambia, Mozambique, and Botswana. If we go to the Middle East, we find that Syria, Jordan, Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Israel, and Lebanon are all embroiled in interconnected water conflicts. Tigris and Euphrates rivers have created problems for Turkey, Syria, and Iraq while different waterways have created problems for Iran and Iraq, and Israel and Lebanon are also in a rising conflict over the supply of water to the Sea of Galilee. Now, of course, this problem is not restricted to the Middle East or the African continent. In fact, it may be even worse in Central Asia, where Uzbek President Islam Karimov recently said that he believed he may need to resort to military intervention if the problems do not reach a peaceful resolution. More than three million children die each year due to water-related diseases. Now, the United Nations worked together to build what we call the Millennium Goals. And one of those Millennium Goals is the idea that we could have the deaths of people uh, who died due to some water-related or sanitation-related illness. And we wanted to cut this number in half by 2015. Now, the United Nations hasn't given up hope yet. The latest estimate says that if we double the investment in water and sanitation technology to 180 billion, uh, then we will be able to reach this goal. However, given the current controversy over privatization, over who controls water and where water should go, it's tough to say that we could find an easy, non-controversial way to reach this number in time by 2015. One thing's for sure, it only takes a quick look at this map to realize that water is a problem that's not going away. And if we don't figure out what we're going to do, we could find ourselves in a war, and sooner than we think. Thanks again for tuning in. We're gonna head out of here uh, and we'll see you next week. In the meantime, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, do you live in a part of the world that's experiencing a water conflict? If so, what do you think will happen in the future? What do you think the future of water in general is going to be? We'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line on Facebook or Twitter. Send us an email at conspiracystuff at discovery.com. <laughs>